I decided to talk about reliability uh, and trust. Um, we all hear this all the time, that uh, trust is key to building a marketplace. So I wanted to talk a little bit about who. Who needs to be trusted? Um, how we are reliable, how we build reliability into our marketplaces, how we demonstrate it, and what you get at the end. I probably have to say a couple of words about Fredos first. Um, Fredos is a uh, freight marketplace. Freight is, in theory, very, very boring. I'm going to need to walk around a little bit. That's better. Um, it's the world's largest digital freight marketplace. Why a freight marketplace? Well, because freight is something everybody does, trillion dollar business, uh, where almost all businesses need to move stuff from point A to point B. And there are a bunch of freight logistics marketplaces here today because it's so everywhere. Um, and it is so hard to do today that it's truly a place that is asking for a marketplace to come and sort it all out. And the way our marketplace is built is actually a little bit complicated, which is why we drew it out on a napkin here so everybody can understand it. You have your carriers, your planes, your trains, your trucks. You have your importers and your exporters, which is anybody who needs to move stuff. And then you have a whole bunch of people in the middle who uh, bring together the uh, forwarders, sorry, the carriers, the trains, the planes, and the importers. Now, um, in the world, there are millions of importers and exporters, um, and hundreds of carriers, and hundreds of thousands of forwarders and brokers who are making it happen, okay? And just to make it really, really clear, can I ask one of the organizers to bring me a drink of water? Yes, there's Oh, good. So if I'm shipping something uh, from China to uh, the US, thank you. Um, that means I'm going to be uh, a small importer in the US. Maybe I'm selling on Amazon, or maybe I have uh, 10 stores in my state. Um, I need to get pallets and containers from um, a factory in China all the way to my warehouse in Los Angeles, which means that it needs to be picked up, put on a boat, gone through customs, put on a, another uh, truck, and brought to my warehouse. And what these middle forwarders do is they um, make that all happen, okay? It's a lot of paper pushing project management. Um, they do it in very arcane ways today. They use paper, phones, faxes, a lot of email, okay? Uh, and we imagined that it did not have to be that way. We imagined that it should be s as easy as traveling from you know, Israel to Berlin like I did yesterday. I went online, I saw the prices, I clicked book, and I was done. So in this world where I am taking my goods that I need to sell, okay, I'm sitting there waiting for those goods to show up. I'm paying a lot of good money, right? I'm paying thousands, probably tens of thousands of dollars to buy those goods. And I need to bring them all the way ho over. I need to trust whoever's bringing them across. Okay, and so what people do today is they wait for somebody to knock on their door and say, I'll take care of it for you. And when we came in as a marketplace and said, no, 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 don't do that. Go online, find some random person you've never met and have them move your goods halfway across the world. Well, as you can imagine, people told us we were totally crazy. And we knew like any other marketplace that trust was gonna be key. And you know, sure enough, if you look at one of our favorite marketplaces, um, there's so many cues and they do so much to make sure that people trust everything, right? Amazon is a brand, okay? You have to trust it, you do trust it because they're reliable. 
They make sure to use the brand of the selling, sellers that are being sold. They have ratings. They have Prime. We love Prime, especially that like swish, you know? They have a specific price. They tell you when it arrives. They tell you who's shipping it. They tell you other, se other sellers so you know that you're not being tricked into just buying this, right? You can see other options too. There's so many different things that are going on to make us trust this marketplace. One of the interesting things is they're making us trust a combination of the platform and the supplier, okay, or the seller. This is another napkin. We do this on purpose. It's not because we're lazy. We think it looks cool. Okay. Um, so do people trust your platform? Do people trust the sellers? Both are important. If people trust the platform and they trust the sellers, you're in good shape. If people trust the sellers but not the platform, then you're going to be disintermediated and your repeat rates are going to be incredibly low. People are going to come, find the supplier, find the seller, and then just go work with them directly. If people trust the platform but don't trust the sellers, you're still in pretty good shape because they'll rely on the platform for accountability and they'll be willing to work with sellers they don't know or don't yet trust. If people don't trust the platform or the seller, well, go home. Or, you know, come join us because they trust us. Um, and what's really interesting is we actually went and we surveyed our buyers and we said, um, who are we, right? When you come to Fredos, are we a marketplace, a freight forwarder, a broker, or a carrier? Okay, and I showed you that funny picture of all the different people, right? Um, and yes, great, 47.4 of them agreed we understood that we were a marketplace, but more than 50% didn't realize we were a marketplace. And that's something that happens uh, frequently when you're a marketplace and when you're a platform is that people coming on do not go to marketplace conferences, okay? They just come on and they see a service and they buy it, they book it, they don't know the difference between the platform and the seller. And this is why engendering trust in both is critical. So two sections now. Section one, how do you make people trust your platform and your sellers? Well, first is be reliable, be trustworthy. And second will be shouted out from the rooftops. So how do you create reliability? Step number one, and this is something that doesn't happen in a day, it happens over the life of your platform, is create very good, clear rules about how business is conducted on your platform. That's the core of reliability, is saying, we're doing business in a totally new way, but I'm gonna make sure to write the rules to make both of you safe, buyer and seller. Okay, how many people here have built marketplaces? Okay, how many of you have terms and conditions or SOPs that you're proud of and you hang up on your wall and you send to your mother? <laughs> okay, I saw maybe two. You all need to be proud of your SOPs. They're boring as heck. I, I don't even know how to say how long it took us to understand how such a boring piece of something is actually the most exciting asset that you have. Okay, your SOP inclu includes First of all, who are you as a platform? What services do you provide versus what services do the sellers provide? Okay, that's a really important thing to both legally and from every other aspect to be able to uh, explain. Secondly, what are the requirements? What do you require of the sellers? What do you require of the buyers, right? How is payment made? How are disputes handled? What happens if, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? What are buyers allowed to publish about sellers? What are sellers gonna know about the buyers before they do business, right? All of these things are effectively establishing a new world. They're telling people, come into my world and do business in a way that's safe and reliable. And your first version of your SOP, you gotta go out there, 
go to good marketplaces and read their friggin' SOPs, 400 pages of stuff, right? But it'll slowly start to occur to you and you'll slowly understand why this is your blueprint for the world you're creating. And uh, just as a side point, the way we built them because we were all falling asleep is we had parties. We'd bring lots of coffee, lots of people, and we'd sit there and build them together, okay? I can show you pictures of us all going, oh no, not another SOP party. Um, okay, who comes in? Who do you invite in? You vet everyone at the beginning, right? A seller fails, remember half of the people are gonna think that you failed when your seller fails. So don't say, oh, they know it's just a seller, right? In the beginning, you have to vet everyone. And that includes buyers, because you're bringing sellers because they're trusting that you're bringing them good buyers. And marketplaces, online marketplaces, are a feeding ground for bottom feeders, okay? You will get the worst people who can't do business anywhere else are trawling online and looking to do business online. And you can't do that to your sellers, right? Your sellers are, are your supply, okay? So vet everyone. It's very expensive in the beginning, but believe me, a couple of slides down, you'll see how you can stop doing that. Create metrics. And this is how you can move from vetting every single seller and every single buyer. You create metrics. Your data fiends, I didn't look actually to see if there were enough data topics here, but you have to be data fiends. That means that everything that's happening on your marketplace, you start to track. Again, on day one, you don't track at all, but slowly you're building metrics that tell you if a particular transaction was handled reliability. For example, number of shipments with the buyer message having at least one seller message, right? We know that freight requires somebody to talk to somebody. We have the buyers and the sellers talking to each other. We know that if nobody's talked to each other, chances are there's a problem because it, all we need them to do, we need the seller to say, I'm on it, right? Otherwise, the buyer's gonna be like, wait, is anybody handling my freight, right? So create metrics and create metrics upon metrics that help you understand whether you have reliability. And moderate automagically. So for example, when we set off and we said our buyers and our sellers are gonna talk to each other directly, we're not gonna be in the middle of that. It was a little scary. My operations people told me you're crazy, right? You can't let them talk to each other. I'm like, yeah, but we can't scale like this, right? So we built AI to monitor what was going on and to see where there were issues and to dive in there. And it worked wonderfully. And be super careful around people's pockets, people's credit card bills, people's bank accounts, okay? You can lose a shipment. We have, don't quote me. We have lost shipments. I didn't say that. We haven't lost shipments. You can lose a shipment. You can damage it. You can break it. You can dye it all purple by accident, and people will forgive you. But if you double charge them, or you charge them $2 more, than you said they would, they, they lose all faith in you. And the opposite is true. If you have good, solid, perfect financials and fin ops, then people will trust you in ways that you can't even imagine. So you're a great hire is a terrific fin ops manager. Anybody who's not behaving, kick them off and let people know that you're kicking them off. Let them back on if they want to later. This is a chart of one of our seller's revenues um, who was doing really well. He was doing great because he kept on lowering his prices but then going using back doors to charge people. And we saw this. And so as you can see, he was doing really, really great. And we told him, stop it. He didn't stop it. Stop it. He didn't stop it. We took him off. And then we let him back on when we put the measures in place and we're clear to him about how he has to behave, and then he stopped taking everybody else's market share by lying. So those are some of the ways in which you can create real reliability, okay? Um, and then the second part of that is actually to demonstrate that at every chance you have. So first of all, reliability is best seen in liquidity. If I see that stuff's happening, I'm gonna trust the site. So you have to show liquidity on your site. Um, this is Dan, Code and Quill, one of our early customers, who said, first he just watched the site 
kept on doing searches to see if things changed, to know if it was live. Now, we knew that we had 40 people in a room running around and we had hundreds of sellers and buyers everywhere, but he didn't know that because he saw a page that looked too static to him, okay? So when somebody comes to your page, if they see liquidity, they'll trust, right? They'll trust that things are happening and it's moving. Tickers, banners, sales, uh, testimonials, reviews, have that, have that ha happening. Show reliability by taking the people on your site, the sellers on your site, in our case, and build a brand for them. Show who they are, give them customer reviews, give them a page, right? Um, talk it up, send out blogs about a great seller, right, you have on your site who did something great. Talk the talk of these are great guys. And don't rely on big names for that, okay? Um, anybody who was in San Francisco in March will have heard me talk about the surprises we had when we went out to get huge names because we thought that would help the reliability and the branding of our site, and we discovered that it didn't. We discovered that the big names did not help, okay? They didn't harm, but actually it was the tiny giants who had thousands of shipments and hundreds of reviews that were getting picked every time over some of the giants who we've masked out because they might be mad at me for saying that. Help your sellers and buyers communi communicate well and reliably. You're a marketplace. You should not be a concierge for long. Sometimes you have to be, but you have to step out and let them work with each other, right? Your margins are so teeny tiny that anything you're doing means your model isn't gonna work, right? You, you have to be sitting here all day for your marketplaces to be successful, okay? So that means you have to allow buyers and sellers to talk to each other. Now you're necessarily bringing together people who are not doing business regularly. That's what you're doing. You're creating a new way of doing business. You're bringing people together who can't find each other otherwise, which means they probably don't know how to talk to each other. It might be a small forwarder in China who's working with somebody out in Alabama. They don't even speak the same language, okay? So you have to teach them, not um, Mandarin and English. That would be a little bit of a steep uh, learning curve. You have to teach them how to communicate. You have to create templates. You have to create features. You have to assume that it's not just gonna happen automatically. You have to step in and make sure that people are communicating well and reliably. Look for any opportunity for social proof. This is where you must appear, um, Trustpilot. Um, anybody who gives a good review on our website to a seller or to Fredos, we have obviously our own NPS score that we run reliably, um, you need to send them online <laughs> to give the same uh, review online. So this is Trustpilot, good place. Wherever you are, wherever it is that you live, you make sure that there's lots of social proof out there because people are looking at it and looking for it. Um, and obviously, open text reviews is a great reliability. Um, have humans do, especially in early days. People didn't like it when we signed emails, you know, the ops team or the FinOps team or the buyers, you know, a nice account manager, right? They didn't like that. They wanted names, they wanted people. Um, in the long term, you can't do that, but in early days, it's, it's really helpful for reliability to put pictures um, and actually send people and have people available. So when it works, when you do that, when you manage to create reliability, really, and show it, um, that's when you can step back because it's actually happening, right? People are coming to this new world you've created to do business, and they're finding that it's a good place to do business. And you'll see improved conversions quickly. You'll see organic growth and repeat rates and reduced intermediation. Trust me. Thank you. <laughs>